question is in German was related to analytics, and on that note, it's time to invite our next speaker. And the session is titled Data Driving the Decisioning Process. And to present that, I would like to welcome our speaker. He is an analytics professional with over 22 years of diverse experience in driving innovation around speed analytics, social media analytics, collections and retentions analytics, and cognitive sciences. He has worked in cutting edge analytics technologies in companies like GE, Avid, and IBM. So please put your hands together for Director of Global Analytics at Concentrix, Mr. Shekhar Ashnaz. Side 
where you know, I have managed collections for banks and retention for you know, the insurance industry. So I understand the main point in the business side when dropouts of customer happens and business is not able to articulate exactly the reasons behind it. Traditionally, customer experience has never been given importance in a collection sessions. Now, you, if there is a tail point customer, the, the process at which you know, the collection happens, experience is generally not given you know, that kind of an importance. But in reality, banks have started moving, you know, having that shift. They realize that it is important to improve collections, but not at the cost of customer experience. Primarily because of the fact that customer retention in long term is at stake. In collections, if you look at it, right, intent and emotion of a customer plays a big role. And when it comes to intent, there are two parts to it. One is a customer intent to pay, and there is an uh, uh, advisor or, some, or an agent who is actually speaking to a customer. So their intent to collect also makes a huge difference. Similarly, in emotion, during, a, during the start of a conversation, the customer would have come out with a very negative, negative, uh, negative emotion. Because of the fact that he is in a delinquent bucket, he is part of collections, the emotion is generally negative to start with. But is there a way that an advisor can transform the conversation into a, from a negative to a positive, into a positive conversation? And, and now, this case study is all about using intent and emotion and merging the unstructured data with structured data. And finally, the objective is to improve collections. The bank wanted to understand consumer behavior, reasons for delinquency, and how using these insights collections can be improved. But without having any compromising approach towards compliance and, compliance and control, primarily because of the fact that any, any defect as far as uh, customer experience and compliance will have a very pragmatic impact on customer retention. So we used structured data for this segmentation the people who are from the analytics side of it understand that in the banking side of it, this segmentation is a very critical parameter to identify who is at risk. So at, and in that sector, you know, generally structured data is what is used. Structured data is nothing but your transactional information, the demographic of the information. Looking at that, there are you know, various you know, uh, propensity models are built and so on and so forth. But that is not the end of it. Right? Structured data gives you know, so, so much. What made the difference in, in, in this particular case study is that we deployed speech analytics for this particular bank and collected a lot of uh, unstructured insights from it, especially on the intent of a customer and the emotion of a customer. And we merged that with the structured data. That is that we have done by creating some super variables, and, all, and there are you know, a lot of hypotheses which is being done, test and control, so on and so forth, and merge that with the structured data. This hybrid model which got created was extremely powerful because of the fact that the actual experience of a customer, the actual intent of a customer is taken into consideration while the, you know, when there is a conversation is happening. Normally, that, you know, that is not the case when, when there is any, any kind of conversation is said. Because of that, the, the entire quality process uh, got improved, the, uh, uh, the quality automation was, was deployed, uh, the end objective of the collection was also met, was also improved by almost like 3%. Because of the fact that we were looking at the intent of uh, the person who is speaking to the end consumer, we were able to have some personalized coaching to them, so on and so forth, right? So that this particular slide is actually a framework which we, uh, which we deployed, where thick data which is effectively the emotion of a customer, the intent of a customer, etc. on the left side of it, and on the right side of it is, is the you know, typical structured data from the CRM, uh, the transaction data, all of that comes together to make an impact on the KPIs the bank, banks were looking at. Moving forward, this is a particular typical case study where a you know, lot of these users, uh, you know, uh, the social networking sites like you know, TikTok and Thriller and you know, so on and so forth, a right? lot of them are there. This particular client uh, you know, also had a social networking platform. They were kind of late into this game, 
randomly uh, uh, because of that there are a whole lot of videos you used to get uploaded within into their platform where some of the logo was already available so which, which, is, which is not really great for that particular brand which means that you know, they need to you know, kind of moderate the content before all of this you know, data or the videos are getting uploaded into it which means that and they get, you know, it, is, it is next to impossible uh, you know, to moderate it manually. Every video cannot be, you know, can't be looked at and we, we can't do a moderation you know, on a manual basis. That is where the, you know, the entire AI and machine learning comes into the picture. By using computer vision and CNN, we developed a processing engine which, which, was, which, which was identifying the videos wherein the other logos were present. And that processing engine was able to automatically take out all of those videos out and upload only those videos where you know, those, the, those other logos are not available. Only the respective client logos are there. Those are the ones which, gets, which is get uploaded. This actually improved the entire brand value of the organization. You know, and from that, that, is, that is a use case uh, using computer vision. So if you look at it in this case study as well, the the volume of data is extremely high. If, if, if I just go back to my first statement in terms of volume of data, in this case, the volume was high. It was, you know, the variety was extremely high. And there is a, you know, processing engine which is required to manage that data. And that processing of processing is what helps to make decisions. Now let's come to uh, now. Uh, 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 something related to social media, connect insights is very closer to that, right? So this, this, this particular case study is all about transforming online conversations into actionable insights to all the power brand, to power brand strategies. It is pretty much impossible to measure the success if the brand doesn't really know what success looks like. The metrics matters the most for every brand. In the digital era we live in, where millions of data is getting generated every second, while there are a lot of different numbers flying around, like likes, followers, views, shares, so on and so forth. Social media analytics is extremely critical to any successful campaign or brand strategy. It is critical for brands to improve their social media and brand strategy to build and sustain brand equity, improve campaign performance, manage online reputation, gain a competitive advantage, and above all, enhance customer experience. This, in this particular case study, you know, we have, uh, it's an omnichannel you know, conversation analysis. Multiple data sources are involved, just like Samir mentioned, email, chat, contact center data, social media data. Other than voice calls, uh, you know, all other sources of data were, you know, were uh, used and we actually use Connect Insights to you know, derive a lot of value from that. And clients actually, you know, a lot of times what, they know, what happens is that they don't have a quantifiable way of adding value to these unstructured data sources back to their process, back to their, you know, as an insight to their, insight to their products. And because of the fact that so much amount of one channels are there, uh, different channels are there, the velocity and the volume is extremely high. And the veracity of the data is very low. The accuracy of the data is very low. That is where, you know, a, a platform like AI comes into picture and on top of it, when analytics, you know, an engine comes into play, that, that makes a you know, huge difference. So, uh, what, so the, we, we got a lot of insights from KI, you know, from a platform standpoint. And we, we uh, kind of extracted all of that, that insights into our own platform, which is, which is, which is named as Concentrated Insights Platform. And we ran our own NLP engine to generate insights. Data, uh, which is coming out like that, need to be processed in, the, in, a, very, in, a, in a very right manner. For that, there is a you know, clear framework which is required. This is a, um, you know, from a uh, this is a framework which is named as concept, you know, uh, Conversation to Insights, what we call it as C2I framework. It's a, uh, it's a solution that combines enough ex you know, expertise in multiple areas of social and brand analytics, such as data science, data engineering, NLP, uh, and you know, various flexible, flexible engagement models and so on and so forth. 
it analyzes customer interactions across all the uh, touch points which are there to deploy a 360 degree view of the customer behavior across, you know, across all of those channels. With this framework, we help client to understand what, uh, what is the campaigns, what kind of campaign strategies are working, how to optimize the business investment. Compare performance across business channels, you know, all the social channels to determine where to focus their engagement in our campaigns. Uncover opportunities to segment audiences based on personas by spotting them where they spend time. Gain competitive intel and benchmarking. Test different messages and channels to determine what, what is that which is resonant, resonating with the segment what you are targeting. Monitor brand reputation, detect crisis, so on and so forth, right? Lot of things Samir has already you know, kind of mentioned. We, we add a, lay, you know, a, 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 a layer of NLP on top of it. Now, from an from analytics standpoint, we drive a lot of value to our, our clients. Some of the use cases which is coming out of this particular framework is what is what is depicted here. You now, like a you know, persona, brand insights, competition insights, uh, content and campaign evaluation, influencer analysis, so on and so forth. If you look at you now, as a, if I look at from a summary standpoint, right? If you you now all of this, yeah. Well, in all of these three case studies, data is actually extremely complicated with huge volume and velocity. The, uh, from a variety standpoint, data, you know, every type of data is coming in, whether it is structured data or unstructured data. Unstructured data is extremely difficult to manage. Processing of this entire data is, is a key element to it. But finally, if I, look, if I look at it from that standpoint, orchestration of all of this data is the utmost importance. If the data is not looked at at a, a, with a view of driving value, yeah, if, if data is not, not looked at for driving value to the end client, data is of no use. So orchestration becomes one of the key elements of it. Each part is of this entire process is important, which drives the decisioning process. This is you now uh, what what I mentioned you now in, in the last uh, few slides are primarily the case studies what what we have done. But this is not just a view from concentrates. If you look at it from an external point of view, around 90 percent of the current data is originated in last two years, and out of this. 80% is structured. Only 18% of the organization is actually making use of this unstructured data because of the fact that it is difficult to manage. It is complex in nature. But sooner the organization are, you know, are equipping itself to unearth the insights from the rich vault of unstructured data, better it is for consumers, organization, and industry as a whole. Lot of you guys are practitioners within the analytics industry. I just want to leave now with, with this particular you know, framework for you, for, for all of you to think about. In the journey of data to insights, some variables are extremely critical. Every organization is at a different level of maturity as far as analytics is concerned. Left side of the chart is where the organization, where, no, where, 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 where the organization is at currently. Is the organization matured enough for adopting analytics of scale, what is the culture of the organization? What kind of data is there? What kind of leadership is there? What is the talent which is available to manage this data? What is the readiness to implement, etc. On the right side, if you look at it, it is all the benefits the organizations can derive from data in, in the data to insight journey. What are the drivers of customer experience, operational optimization, customer engagement, loyalty, and so on and so forth. In the center, what, what we are seeing is the analytics processing. In this, during the discovery phase of it, identification of the right data sources, right now, what are the use cases which need to be deployed, what are the challenges, so on and so forth, is something which we which is looked at. An entire due diligence, right? And from there, you know, uh, based on all of those objectives, the challenges and everything, the right solutions are defined. And once the right solutions are defined, 
then the delivery, uh, from our deliverable standpoint, happens, which actually drives the outcome. Having said that, when we look at in, in the current world, because of the, the kind of uh, volume of data, variety of data, veracity of data, and velocity, uh, the, you know, there is a lot of focus, strategic focus on governance, privacy, and compliance is extremely, extremely critical to manage this data to size value. Partnerships like Concentrix and KI is in the right, you know, uh, is in the right track in order to do that. I'll sign off by giving you a peek into what what are we what are we looking to build out. We are you know, so this is primarily on on by making use of computer vision and CNN and you know, uh, primarily on the facial recognition phase of it, wherein we are using uh, you know, uh, all sort of AI and machine learning algorithms to look at facial recognition which will help the bank at a credit underwriting process. Just think about a fact that you know, now, uh, especially post-COVID, right, when I was in, I, I used to be in banking, whenever we need to meet a customer, we used to go to, go to that particular customer, uh, and during the underwriting process, a lot of times the, the customer need to walk into the branch and meet the credit person, especially the, the ticket size is higher, Somebody will have to do a something called a speeding or personal discussion. All of those personal discussions have moved digitally now. Everything is in, is, is in a uh, now a video conference is what happens. When when someone is sitting in front of you, we are able to look at the body language of body language of a person. But if it is through video conferencing, how does it how will it happen? It is very difficult, and that is where. AI will come into picture. That is where machine learning will come into picture. We look at the facial recognition, facial expression, almost closer to around 190 odd, you know, several parameters are there within this entire phase, which actually depicts if, if, you know, if whether a consumer is actually talking the truth or lie, which is, you know, extremely exciting. I, I never thought that in my banking days, you now the Technology will evolve to a stage where we are able to look at one person, one engine is able to process whether somebody is telling the truth or lie. But that is where you know the, the, the industry is moving. We are in that you know phase of uh, build, building that entire solution. You know currently it is in prototype, and you know uh, there is a, a testing which is going on with a particular bank. Probably in next 90 days of time. Uh, we should be able to you know, launch it from a, from a solution standpoint across the financial sector. If you look at it, data from a, from a decision process standpoint, even the phase gives us so much amount of data. That is what I just want to end up with. Data drives decision process. Thank you so much for your time.